Hi everyone. Uh, today we will be talking about uh, placenta creta. Now, uh, many times uh, people tend to overlook this condition. The reason being that they don't pay attention to the protocol that you should follow. Now, whenever you are doing any scan, you should always follow a protocol for everything. So for placenta, like I usually tell in the class that there are four or five points that you should see. And one of the important points among those four or five points is the significance of retroplacental space. Now, what is this retroplacental space and why it is important in terms of placenta creta? We are going to basically concentrate on that part. So first of all, we should know what is this retroplacental space and how it is seen uh, when we are scanning. Whenever you are scanning and whenever you are tracing the placenta, always pay attention to this dark area that you see between the myometrium and the placental tissue. There is this dark area with multiple white lines that you can make out. Now, they, can you see these lines? These lines are running parallel to the placenta. These lines are nothing but the walls of the retroplacental vessels. So this retroplacental space contains retroplacental vessels. So whenever you are going to put color, it will show you color flow also. Now, where is this retroplacental uh, space? It is between the myometrium and the placenta. You will see this area with multiple white lines which are running parallel to the placental area. And whenever you are seeing them, uh, you will notice that this space is uniform throughout. In a normal case, it is uniformly seen throughout the placental surface behind between the myometrium and the placenta. You are going to see this area. So uh, pay attention to this and trace the whole placenta and see this area throughout. Now what is the significance in terms of placenta creta? Now we all know that placenta creta is of three types. Placenta accreta, placenta increta and placenta per creta. In case of accreta, usually what is there? There is superficial invasion. In case of increta, the invasion is into the deeper layers of myometrium. And in case of per creta, it reaches till the serosa and sometimes it may even invade the serosa. So many times on ultrasound, we are not able to differentiate between increta and per creta. Now, in terms of retroplacental space, what is the difference between these three kinds of placenta creta. Let us go to these pictures and they will tell you. This is the same patient that I am showing you the pictures of. It's of the same patient. And in the same patient, you could see all the three uh, types of placenta creta. If you see the first picture, now when you see the first picture, you can see the placenta. And then you can see very clearly that there is retroplacental space. So retroplacental space is not reduced in this area or it is not See, as such, not disappeared in this area. No, it is seen very well, but what is the thing that you are seeing in the retroplacental space that is telling you this is something different from a normal retroplacental space? Can you just see these white lines, these white areas? Now, these white areas, if they were parallel to the placenta, we would have said that these are just the walls of the retroplacental vessels. But just look at them carefully. You can see they are running perpendicular to the placenta. So many of them running parallel to the placenta in the myometrial area. What are these? These are the adhesions. These are adhesions. So this is telling you this is placenta creta. And which type placenta creta? Because the space is maintained, or sometimes some cases the space may be slightly reduced also, but here it is properly maintained. What you are seeing as bore adhesions, so we will say this is placenta accreta. This is placenta accreta. Now, if you just move to another area in the same patient, see here. This is the serosal layer. Hardly the myometrium is seen in this case. And you can see here you could see very well the retroplacental space. But here it is totally disappeared. It has totally disappeared. You cannot see it at all. And this would usually be either placenta in creta and sometimes even in placenta per creta you may see such a picture. Why? Because many times you may not be able to differentiate between the two. But let us come to the third part in this same patient. See here. You can see the serosa very clearly here. Even here you could see the serosal layer very well. You can very clearly see the serosal layer. But just follow this. 
and see in this area. When you see in this area, what has happened? Not only the serosal layer has become irregular, but it has become a little hazy also. You cannot make out very well that where is the serosal layer clearly. It seems to be invading the serosal layer. So this way we can say that, we can say clearly that this is percreta. In addition, wherever there would be invasion in the uh, myometrium area by the placental uh, tissue, then this is going to create, what, what will happen? This is going to invade the vessels. So when the vessels in the myometrium will get invaded, what will happen further? It will increase the color flow. But then how will I know this is abnormal color flow? or this is just the normal retroplacental flow. So for that, what we can go do is, we can go to the area where we can see the, plus, where we can see the retroplacental space clearly, put color there, and then compare it to the area where there is no retroplacental space seen. And you can make out that there would be a difference in the color flow. Where would the color flow be more? In the area of increta or percreta, where the placental in tissue has invaded into the myometrium. So, this tells you that there is a lot of significance of seeing the retroplacental space. You know, you should, it's, it should be a part of your routine obstetric scan. Many places it happens that people have diagnosed conditions of placenta previa, everything, but they have missed on placenta creta. What kind of patients you should be extra careful in? The patients who are previous cesarean. Previous cesarean patients with anterior placenta, which is low lying, which is overlying the scar area, there the risk is pretty high. But that does not mean you ignore other patients. You should see in other patients also. All the patients, your obstetric scanning should form, uh, should have this protocol of seeing the retroplacental space that it is uniformly seen throughout. So you will not miss a case of placenta creta. Now I'll just show you the video of the same patient just to show you how the things are there. Let us see. See the first one. Placenta is seen very well, right? And this is the retroplacental area and just observe the perpendicular bands in this area. See here. Now more clearly see. Multiple bright white bands passing through this dark retroplacental space. So I'll again repeat. See here. So these are this area, if I see such a thing, then we would say this is placenta accreta. But see further. See this area. This dark space is totally gone. And you can see the serosa and the placenta. Now here I will give you one more important precaution that you should have in mind. That whenever you are doing the scan, if the patient is thin, don't put too much pressure with the probe. Because if you will put pressure with the probe, then this area will get artificially delineated. It would not be seen because of the pressure because this is a spongy area. So when you put the probe, it will. if you put pressure with the probe, this area will get compressed and you will have a false appearance of placenta creta or this would create a problem for you. So keep the probe a little lightly if you don't see the area. Then let us go further in the same patient. The whole serosal layer has become irregular and hazy. In this portion, at least, you can make out here some shadows are coming. So you can make out here. No? Here you can see the serosa very clearly till here also. And then in this portion, it has become very irregular. And in the same area, you can see the color flow also has increased. Right. So uh, I think this is going to be of use for you and always make it a point that whenever you are observing the placenta, you see all the things in the placenta and pay attention to the retroplacental space also. Now, in addition, many times they say that if you find too many cystic areas in the placenta, in a localized portion, that gives you a very high suspicion for placenta creta. However, in this case, we notice that there are not much of cystic areas seen in the placenta. No, placenta looks pretty smooth. It is not so having too many cystic areas. So uh, keep this in mind that you cannot go only on one feature. Yes, it is a very important feature. If you see too many cystic areas and one localized portion of placenta, it will give you an indication that you should carefully look for retro, retro placental space. But overall, I would say that whenever you are doing an obstetric scan, irrespective whether it is a previous cesarean or not, you should always see the retro placental space throughout so that you don't miss out on a case of placenta. Krita. I hope this will be of help to you and thank you so much for listening.